Welcome to Haunted Escapes with Chris and Diane. This podcast will cover our trips to haunted hotels and locations. We will go over a brief history of the location, our personal experiences, and even rate some of the ghost tours in that area. Join us on our haunted escapes. Many of the Lenape Indians made their way from Philadelphia and settled a thousand acres of land, which is now known as New Hope, PA. William Penn authorized the sale of land to Robert Heath for the purposes of building a mill and establishing a community. New Hope was considered the halfway point between New York and Philadelphia. Travelers would stay overnight and be ferried across to Delaware in the morning. New Hope was originally called Coriel's Ferry due to the family that owned the ferry company. However, after a fire in 1790 that destroyed several mills, the reconstruction was considered a New Hope. Today, New Hope is a shopping and lodging hotspot. Themed shops, inns, and pubs line the streets. The Bucks County Playhouse puts on a award-winning plays and has been host to many famous actors and playwrights. New Hope has something for everyone. Welcome to Haunted Escapes with Chris and Diane. Today is episode 9, New Hope. Yep, we're finally back after it's been about a month since we've done one. Yeah, it's been a while. We had a lot of stuff going on. So we're doing episode number 9. This is, we're going to be in New Hope, Pennsylvania. Yes, we've been there a few times. It's always a really nice place to go to. It's a quaint little town. Lots of little shops you can go check out. Really good restaurants. And they have an excellent ghost walk. And it's on the ghost walk that we'll be talking about some of the stories that they tell you. Now, what were your first impressions of New Hope? when we got there. I know we've been there a bunch. Ah, it's really nice. It's small. It's got the a real big bridge that you can cross over and Lambertville is on the other side of it, which is mm-hmm. New Jersey. They're called sister cities, I think, and they're they both have a lot of cool places to go see and I think Lambertville does a big thing for the holidays for like Christmas and Halloween. They do big light things. Uh, maybe we'll go there in a later episode. But today we're gonna talk about New Hope. And it's a nice quaint little village. It's right by yeah, the Delaware Canal. Mm-hmm. And it's got a, like I said, it's a lot of hills, so there's a lot of hills walking up and down. But the shops are really nice and the people are are nice and yeah, it's a it's a cool time. Yeah, and some of the shops are really interesting. That was the first place that I saw a Wiccan shop, which was really interesting to me. And to see like, I mean, cuz you hear the people practice Wicca and they have their like any other religion, they have their religious objects and things, but that was interesting for me and to see like sage and all of feathers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and then they also have another store that opened, uh, I guess it was relatively recent, and we went in there, and it's kind of like the Lorraine Warren. Oh, yeah, it was like a little haunted museum. Yeah, that freaked me out. Yeah, they had all kinds of haunted items and stuff like that that you can go and you can look at, and that was pretty cool. Yeah, I remember we were there with other people and you were like looking all around and looking at everything like they have things that uh like pictures of like dead like what were they called death portraits back yeah. in the day and like uh very like macabre things and i remember at one point i was waiting outside for for you to come out because it was freaking me out so bad yeah she got freaked out so she went outside and waited for me but that's that's neat i can't remember the name of the of the store but it was pretty cool. And uh, there's also the New Hope Railroad where um, you can take a train ride and see some of the scenery in Bucks County. Yeah, you can sit down and they have one thing. Uh, they do dinners and you can pay to ride the train and do a dinner. And I believe they also have something around Halloween where it's like a ghost train. Mm-hmm. They take you around they tell you stories. So it, it's definitely a really cool place and it's worth checking out. And they also have a lot of cool um, inns to stay at. Like, we definitely want to do the Logan Inn. And I also want to do the Wedgwood Inn. There's a lot of cool ghost stories about that one, too. So, uh, without further ado, we'll uh, start going into some of the ghost stories that you uh, 
Ah, baby, you can start. Okay. So one of the most famous people that have been seen in New Hope is Aaron Burr. And of course, everybody knows that Aaron Burr had the famous duel with Alexander Hamilton. There's a bed and breakfast which is said to have once housed Aaron Burr for a week after he was on the run following his famous 1804, 1804 duel with Alexander Hamilton. The bed and breakfast is also rumored to be haunted by Aaron Burr. He's been spotted roaming the house, peering around corners, and people claim that they have seen his specter around town anxiously wait actually watching his back as if he's being followed. For those more into material history than spectral, you can also enjoy the B and B's small but fascinating collection of dueling pistols from Aaron Burr's era. That sounds pretty cool. We'll have to try to go stay there. Would you want to stay there? Yeah, I would go check that out. What would you do if you saw him? I don't know. That'd be interesting. Would you be like, why did you why did you shoot him? Well, we shot him because they hated each other. Would you get into the nitty gritty of it and be like his therapist? Yes, I'll uh, I'll I'll do a ghost therapy. Okay. We'll make a podcast of it. Another story that they tell you is about painter Joseph Pickett and his studio on Mechanic Street. So Joseph Pickett, who was a native of New Hope, he made his living as an artist at the end of the 19th century in a small studio on Mechanic Street. One of his paintings is famous, and it's called Manchester Valley, and it hangs in New York City's Museum of Modern Art. Mm -hmm. So Pickett gained recognition long after his death in 1918, and there is a piece of him that continues to manifest itself throughout the home and studio. It's said that he is known to remove paintings off of walls. It's also said that people see dark, human, shadowy figures years on the second floor that they think are him and they also did a seance on the second floor and they believe they say that joseph pickett actually appeared and then he pulled a woman's hair see that's just the ghost that makes that just makes a mess pulling the the arts off the walls and just being a nuisance pulling your hair and well, i mean i guess he's pissed off because nobody bought his shit when he was alive <laughs> <laughs> i did go to the museum of modern art few years ago i don't remember if i saw this painting or not i probably didn't yeah it was a cool experience yeah i've never been there so when i i don't really know much about painting and art diane does she went to school for that stuff i, I don't know anything about that yeah i'm not a big fan of the modern art i'm more of the classic art but traditional art which i believe it's it's called it's a unique museum okay so the next house it's the van zant house um a very dark energy is said to be in the fireplace a dark figure came out of the fireplace toward the owner of the house and also a little girl has been seen there's also an old spinster woman who is said to haunt the fireplace so lots of stuff going on with the fireplace and also that an investment banker hung himself and is seen also so there's a lot going on in that house i don't know if that's a bed and breakfast also i'd have to look that up yeah i don't know but there's something definitely going on with this fireplace where dark figures and little kids well and... i wonder if the old spinster is the dark figure oh that could be true time you go on the tour yeah we've we've done the tour a couple of times mm -hmm. next time we go we'll have to ask they have they, they let you ask questions and stuff so we'll have to ask them ask about that so the next place is the logan inn the logan inn is one of the oldest inns in america the logan inn was has a whole host of ghosts it was an operation through the revolutionary and civil war people have claimed to see an american revolutionary war era soldier beating his ghostly drum through the hotel in addition people claim to see dancing orbs that are visible to the naked eye if you're looking for a haunted room you want to stay in number six known as emily's room it's apparently the one to get. You can usually tell when she will make an appearance because apparently her manifestations are preceded by the smell of lavender. The basement is also considered a hot spot of paranormal activity. Now, we've been in here. We haven't had the chance to stay overnight because it's really hard to get a room. They're mm -hmm. always booked up. But we did go in there. One of our trips to New Hope, we stopped in there for like a bite to eat and we had some drinks. Yeah, we went for like a happy hour. And uh, it, uh, it's, uh, it's really, really nice i think they modified it now though. Yeah, now it's all they, modern and stuff yeah i think they updated it to to be more modern but i no. i still want to stay here yeah i would still want to stay there too but when we went it was still old-fashioned which personally i like that better now i know they go over the logan and an emily on the tour and they say that her manifestations are preceded by the smell of lavender 
And I know, well, through other ghost shows, that, like, old wood, they, it, if you have smells, like, the wood kind of, like, absorbs the smells, and when it gets hot, or when it gets cold, or the wood expands, it releases that scent. Oh, so you think that's really what it is? It's not necessarily the ghost. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm just being, you know, devil's advocate here and saying it could be that. Uh, I mean, it could be when Emily had her lavender perfume on and back in the 1800s and she sprayed it and it got on the wood. And then, you know, when she's coming around, you could smell the lavender. Maybe. I haven't stayed there. I want, I want to, though. So maybe a future episode of this we can... Try to get in there. Yes, we really want to go into the Logan Inn, and we really want to do an investigation there. Um, we yeah. really want to see if we could get in contact with Emily and see these orbs that everybody says that they see. Yeah, so, you know, just putting it out there. If anybody who works there at the <laughs> yeah. Logan Inn happens to hear this, uh, it'd be really cool, you know, if you could get in touch with us, send us an email, penepicproductions at gmail.com. Yep. Okay, on to the next story. The Benjamin Perry Mansion. So, the, the Benjamin Perry Mansion... So, Benjamin Perry developed the patent for green and financed the second bridge to cross the Delaware. A little girl around 12, year old, 12 years old is seen who is, the, who is an ancestor of Benjamin Perry. Oh, I keep it in the family. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one is the Lavender House. The owner, Tom Lynch, painted it lavender. They say an apparition is seen there said to be Tom Lynch. These are just little houses that they stop on the way, and they just tell you, oh, if you look over here, this mm-hmm. is that. And so you don't hear a whole lot, just a little bit of the story. But again, you can always ask questions. And people who give the tours, are, they know the history very, very well. It'd be cool if you could see an apparition of him just painting it. I wonder what he does. Like, do they see the apparition doing? Because they just say that, like, they see him there. Well, maybe he's just standing there watching you go into his purple house. Sitting on the porch, drinking some iced tea. Eating some lavender ice cream. Ew. <laughs> there is lavender ice cream. Well, that's nasty. I've never had it. Why would you want to? It sounds good. I don't. Yes, it does. It tastes like lavender smells. You don't know that. You don't know it'll sound good. It sounds good. Mm-hmm. Anywho. Uh, there's Regent's Row. A woman in white, transparent and floating, is seen in these houses. Now, these are the houses that Benjamin Perry built for his workers to stay in. And they say that a woman is also seen on the roof screaming. So, I'm assuming that this is also the woman in white who um, can also sometimes be seen transparently and than also being seen on the roof screaming. That would be freaky. Yeah, that makes sense. Imagine these big owners of businesses nowadays building whole houses for their their workers to live in. No, they would never do it nowadays. I know. I'm just saying. Imagine if they did. Uh, The next is the old mill. It was... It's been turned to a residential home now. And it says two sisters lived there, and they were complete opposites. As you walk along Ferry Street, people have seen two women in Victorian gowns standing there, waiting for the carriage to arrive. They are said to be called the Sisters of the Victorian Court. Now, I've seen a video on the old mill, and it's one big house, and one side, you can, it's like split down the middle. One side is more traditional looking, and the other side is more modern looking. And that would be cool to see two figures there waiting for a carriage. That, that'd that be freaky. Yeah, you'll probably think it's like a, a reenacting like a re- or re-enacting. something. Yeah, because sure they have stuff like that there once in a while anyway. Uh, next is the Wedgwood Inn. Now, this is another hotel that we want to go stay at. Yes, we definitely want to go here too. This has some really good stories to it. Yeah, so I only have a couple on here. I think maybe one or two. This 18, it was built in 1870 on the site of a British fort. It boasts a basement tunnel where ammunitions were once stored and a, and a secret staircase. And to make it more like something out of a spooky movie, the skeleton of a Hessian soldier was found in a basement chimney. The secret staircase with its hidden wall were believed to have been used to hide runaway slaves. The ghost of a 12-year-old slave named Sarah has appeared to the children here for several decades. New Hope was a stop on the Underground Railroad. That's pretty cool. It's yeah, pretty, cool pretty cool to cool. hear 
we would definitely want to stay here and stay at the Lugan, and we'll, we will definitely have to make a couple trips this summer. Yeah, uh, that's another one where uh, I wonder if, like, you can see the staircase and if they maybe do a thing down into the tunnels or if they're closed. That would be pretty cool, because when you go on the tour, of course, you're only, you're only at the outside of the buildings. Yeah, you're not allowed in the buildings. You just got to kind of stay outside, and they just tell you some stories. But we would like to go stay here, too. This is the other big inn that I want to go stay at in New Hope. So, again, anybody who works at the Wedgwood <laughs> Inn, if you happen to overhear this uh, this little podcast, send, uh, send me some info. Of course, we're joking. Oh, wow. Well. Kind of. <laughs> We would also like to do a collaboration or work something out. Yeah, because I would like to go to these places, stay there, but I would also want to interview some of the workers. And I would like to do like a live streaming thing where we could actually have a live one and we could interview people who work there and find out about it. That'd be cool. We'll have to see if we can set some stuff up. That's why I'm asking if anybody <laughs> works there and, you know, if you could get in touch with us. Same thing for Logan Inn or even the Aaron Burr House. Please send us an email at pinepicproductions at gmail.com. So is this the last story you have This next? is the last ghost story, yes. All right, so you can tell them the last one. So this is the 1833 Umpleby House. Mill Runners... Colonel Buckley and Mr. Black are said to haunt this inn. Look for the light from the Colonel's lantern bobbing through the halls. That would be creepy seeing the lantern bobbing up and down. All right. Sadly, I don't probably can't go in there, so you probably won't be able to see it. Mm-hmm. Unless you can see it in like a window or something. Yeah. But there, there are all the stories we wrote down. Like I said, there are a lot more. I oh, would yeah. highly recommend going there because they actually take you down. There are two streets. There's Mechanicville Road. And Ferry Street. And Ferry Street, yeah. And depending on who your tour guide is, a certain tour guide will take you down Mechanic Road, and the other one will take you down Ferry Street. And each one has, has different a, stories. Yeah, they have different stories. So it's like you can go twice, at least two times, and you'll hear different stories. But it is a, it's a really cool thing to go. Parking is a little bit difficult there, mm-hmm. uh, so you got to get there kind of early if you're going to make it. You can, these websites, you can go on their website, and you can book uh, tickets for it and all. They have them, I think, every weekend during the summer. Well, you can, there's a lot of different apps now where you can go to, like, these privately owned um, parking lots and get parking spaces and make a day out of it. If you want to do, if you want to get good parking, yeah, you should get there early because the parking lot's full up, especially on the weekends. Yeah, it's a very tiny little uh, town, so it definitely fills up real quick. It is a very tiny little unique town. It has all little artisan shops. Yeah, and it's, it's a good time. You go there, you can spend the day walking around, mm-hmm. do some shopping. Really then, good ice cream. Yeah, they have an ice cream parlor. Uh, they have a, they have a couple really good restaurants there. So it's definitely worth taking a day to go out there and check it out. Go look at it. Go for the, stay for the ghost tour. Because it there it's a good one and it's worth it. Yeah, the ghost the both of the ghost tours we've been on the one for Ferry Street and Mechanic Street. They've they've both been very good and I think the tours run from the summer to October. Yeah, I think they're on the weekend. Yeah. Unless they ch- changed it. I mean, you can go on our website again. You can look it up. But it's definitely worth it. Uh, it's not, a, well, from us, we're in Philadelphia. So it, it's not a long trip for us. Maybe half an hour, 45 minutes away. Yeah, it, it's a place that you definitely want to go visit. So uh, that's that's today's episode of Haunted Escapes with Chris and Diane. We are trying to get new places to go and we're looking to go stay at some new places with the summer coming uh we're not going to be able to post as much as we've been doing because we want to go see some new things so we have some new material to give off to everybody yeah we're uh, not going to be able to be posting every week for the next couple of weeks because now that if we're not posting we're us- we're probably off doing something to get some content yeah yeah because well that's what we that's one of our hobbies is going and doing this stuff and we're we're glad to share these stories with you guys and if anybody listening has any ideas or places you think it'd be cool for us to go check out it doesn't have to be a place to stay it can be just a area that's got a cool ghost stories just drop us a line at panepicproductions at gmail.com which is our email address for this and uh if you have your own stories 
obviously drop them we'll and we'll tell tell your stories as well what do you, what was your favorite stories from the ones that we heard today i like the one with uh, well, the Logan Inn. I want to go to the Logan Inn really bad. I want to go to the Wedgwood Inn, too. They're really cool sounding places, and Logan Inn is so hard to get I know. to book a room. And Wedgwood's pretty hard, too. I want to go check them out, and the Iron Bear Inn, if, uh, I don't know if they're still open. If they are, I would like to try to go there, too. Yeah, I would want to go to the Aaron Burr house and definitely do EVPs. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, but we're happy to be back, and hopefully in another couple of weeks we'll have another episode with more content. Yeah, and like I said, if you guys have any ideas of places to go, give us some ideas. We're always looking for ideas to go check things out. I know we have right now, we're talking about trying to go back to Gettysburg and doing the cash town in yes we do want to do the cash town in because that one's got some really good stories and there's a bunch of other places we want to go down to south carolina to charleston savannah all these places have really cool stories attached to a lot of their bed and breakfasts yes and i'd really love to do the queen mary that's like that's like like the Myrtles was, that's one of my dream trips is to go to the Queen Mary. Yeah, the Queen Mary's in California. Well, we might have to make a, spot, a stop out west. Sure. I wouldn't have a problem with that. There's plenty of... Country's a big country and there's plenty of things to see. And also get to St. Augustine, maybe. Yeah, check out that lighthouse. But thank you, everyone, for, for coming back and listening to our podcast. And as we said, we are... If we're not posting a podcast, we're probably off getting some more content. All right. So thank you very much for listening and thank you for joining us on our Haunted Escapes. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Hi, it's Diane. One more thing before we go. I'd like to invite everybody to join us on our Haunted Escapes with Chris and Diane Facebook page. We are also on TikTok and we are also on YouTube where we also do uh, animated scary short stories. And we hope to see you there. Thank you.